Hi, my name is Adam and I'm a scientist. Uh, specifically, I'm a research assistant in a cancer lab at an academic institution. Um, I thought that it would be interesting this year, in honor of Earth Day and the anniversary of the first March of Science, to make a video depicting what a week in a research lab is like. Partially because, from my personal experience, uh, there's not too many people outside of science who know exactly what goes on in a research lab on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and also, this video is kind of a response to a lot of my friends and family who frequently ask me what it is that I do at work every day. This time of year around Earth Day always kind of makes me think about um, research and science and science's place in the world. And so I thought that it would be interesting to kind of document what goes on in a research lab over the course of a week to show what it is that I do, what it is that all of my coworkers do, and why it's fun and interesting and um, not just all lab coats and goggles. Uh, just a few things to keep in mind throughout the course of this video is that uh, research is very broad and science is very broad and there's a lot of different disciplines and a lot of different kinds of research. So uh, the perspective that I'll be showing uh, in the work that I do is that of a biological research lab in an academic institution. So with that in mind, here is a week in a research lab. Okay, so we're gonna start this week with a little bit of tissue culture. Uh, actually, a lot of it at tissue culture, which is like a hallmark, like giant technique that used in a lot of biological work. So what we do is we have our cells on a petri dish and we keep them growing healthy in our incubators, which keeps it at a specific uh, temperature, CO2 content, humidity, concentration, all that stuff. So uh, what I'm going to be doing today on this Monday is I have to plate some cells for um, a, an assay where we're going to be hitting the cells with some cancer resistant drugs. We've manipulated their genetics a little bit to see what kind of uh, gene expression gives them the best resistance. So uh, let's take a look in my incubator. So these are all the little cell babies on their different kinds of plates. We have big ones, small ones, one with a bunch of different kinds of wells, and they're all growing in this pinkish purplish media. So I'm gonna be taking those cells that are currently in my, in my incubator and I'm gonna move them to a plate that looks like this. It's 96 little teeny tiny wells so I can set them up and then give them all their drug treatments throughout the rest of the week. So that's gonna take a while and we're gonna do it now. Well, that took the better part of a day, uh, but everything has been plated nice and even all on the 96 well plates. So I'm gonna pop those in the incubator and then uh, for the next four days, I'm gonna change the media in those little wells every single day, um, adding the appropriate drug at the appropriate concentration. And then on uh, Saturday, um, I will collect them for uh, the final processing in this experiment. So in total, this is a six day experiment, which is I'd say probably an average length of experiment. Usually they go three to six days uh, with things involving tissue culture. Um, so that's the bulk of the work I did today. I have a few other projects that uh, will hit tomorrow um, and we'll see where it goes. Look at that. Wow. Krippa, what are we doing today? Loading the gels. For? We're seeing the expression of some proteins. Which is called a? Western blot. Western blot. <laughs> so we're doing Western blots today, which is a very commonly used biological technique <laughs> for seeing uh, seeing protein expression in different samples that we collected from TC. So I made all my gels, and I'm gonna load all my samples into the gels. All right, so I've started to run all of my gels. Those blue dots are my samples that I loaded. When you pour the gels, you use this comb to uh, make the little divots in the gel itself so that you can load the samples in individually. And then as the electrical current runs over the course of about two hours, all of these will run down the gel and the proteins within will separate based on size with the largest ones being at the top and the smaller ones being towards the bottom. Done. 
Okay, now we're in the cold room for the next step of the Western block process, which is called the transfer. So what this step is, is it's uh, using also a current like we were before, but this time we're pulling the proteins out of the gel that they were run on and moving them onto a membrane, which we can then cut up and use to actually probe for our protein targets um, later on. So I've set them all up here in these tanks. Uh, we keep them in the cold room because a lot of current means a lot of heat hot plus gel meets melted gel so we keep them in here to keep them cool so that they don't melt and then the next step of that will be getting the membranes out of the tanks and cutting them up and putting them in what's called the primary antibody which is the reagent that we use to specifically probe for the uh, target that we want the next thing will probably just be the cut up membranes sitting in their primary going into the fridge so there are the final cut membranes shimmying and shaking and we'll revisit those in a few days. Um, the binding of the primary antibody to the membranes now is what's ultimately gonna give us a visual um, indicator of the target that we're looking for later. So those are gonna go for two days and I'm gonna go home. Okay, so we just got a bunch of free donuts and Viv lost her shit. <laughs> Good morning. So it's Thursday. So I have the blots that we incubated starting on Tuesday and today I'm gonna to develop them. And that's kind of a lengthy process. So we're gonna go through it really, really fast. We're gonna wash, wash, wash again, put the membranes in secondary antibody, wash, wash, wash one more time mix the membranes with the detection reagent, put them in a cassette, and head on off to the dark room. The next step in the development process is we're going to go in the dark room. So the detection reagent causes uh, basically a reaction where there's a small amount of light emitted on the membranes where the antibodies have found. So what we do is we put autoradiology film over the membranes in the dark room and allow them to expose and then run them through a developer so that we can get crisp, clean bands where the light was, um, was being expressed. So I've put the, the films over the membranes in the cassettes and we're going to leave them in here for a couple hours, uh, possibly overnight, to expose so that when we run the developer we can see the bands that we're looking for. And when I come back to develop the films, I'll finally have my result after four days. Alright, so it's the end of the day and I just ran some of, uh, or one of my films through the developer. And so here's some real time science for you. As you can see, only some of the bands that I was looking for showed up, which is uh, a very common occurrence with the Western blot that you don't always get what you want to see, but you keep on trying. So what I'm going to do is that I have other films in that same cassette that I'm going to leave exposing overnight, so hopefully the I'll see what I want for leaving it for um, a longer period of time in the cassette. Um, if not, there's a lot of troubleshooting you can do, but that's what science is, you know, you do the experiment, you get to the end, you don't get what you want, and then you go back and you try it again and you do that like 80 times, and then you get what you want and you move forward, and that's the fun part. So that's all for today, and tomorrow's Friday, blessedly, so we'll close out on Friday. It's Friday, finally. So, to end off this week, what I thought I would do is that since I'm a research assistant, one of my primary tasks in the lab is to uh, make all the solutions that we use, that everybody uses for, um, for a lot of stuff. So I do that on Friday, so I thought the best way to end this would be for me to make all of my solutions and to talk about some of my thoughts and feelings about science. So, I'm gonna start making some solutions now. So, I hope that just in any way that um, whoever is watching this would find the working life of a researcher to be even a little bit interesting or at least maybe outside of what you had previously thought that it, that, that kind of, that this work and this lifestyle would be. Another thing that I find pretty interesting that I don't necessarily know that a lot of people know about science is that like the people who do it are pretty young. Like a lot of my coworkers, I'm sure you can probably see them in the background or like in some of the footage, like the average age of my lab is probably like 
I want to say like late 20s, early 30s, because people who are who are technicians like me or graduate students or postdocs generally are still in the earlier phases of their life. And I think that that brings a lot of spirit to it that generally some people don't think it has. I think that as a whole, science isn't super featured in like the day to day. Or at least if the science is, the people behind it aren't. And that's that also breaks my heart because one of my favorite things about the field that I work in is the people. All the scientists that I know are generally pretty cool and a little weird. Um, but generally they're all really interesting and fun. And if you're a party with a scientist, they go hard. I'm going to a party after this. It's someone's birthday. If I could do anything, I would really want to give people an appreciation for just the amount of time and effort and planning and resources that goes into any given experiment or any given project or like any given result. And it's all just in the name of moving everybody forward um, through acquiring new knowledge. I really believe like more than anything that science is meant to be shared with everybody because it's done for everybody. It's done for the advancement of a whole people. It's, it's meant to be available. It's meant to be shared so that everybody can learn because knowledge is for everybody and I think that science is for everybody. Um, so that's what I hope to maybe a little bit of this would be is kind of sharing sharing that world with people who might not have immediate access to it. This looks like pee. So that's gonna be it for the week. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your interest. Um, I really hope that you learned something. Um, so stay curious and uh, this is already too long. Um, happy Earth Day, I'm gonna go to happy hour. <laughs>